Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 14 of the course on econometric methods for statisticians, data scientists and data engineers. The title of this talk is prediction in regression model. Now, once we fit a multiple linear regression model on the basis of past data, our objective may be to predict the value of y for a new set of values of x. In many applications, we are interested in such kind of prediction. For the instance, suppose we have fitted a model for the price of uh, different houses in a locality and your x variables are say uh, total house area, built in area, number of bedrooms in the house, in the house, how old the house is etcetera. So, you have a set of explanatory variables and then you have fitted the model on the basis of a set of data, a set of available observations on all these variables. Now, suppose someone is interested in predicting the price of a house in that locality which has a, a area of 200 square meters built in area of say 100 square meters which has 3 bedrooms, 2 bathrooms, the house is 10 years old etcetera. So, on the basis of all these explanatory variables, the objective is to predict the price of the house. Then say the Reserve Bank of India may be interested in the effect of say 1 percent of 2 percent increase or decrease in repo rate or reverse repo rate on inflation. So, suppose they have fitted a model on the basis of past data of repo rate and reverse repo rate and inflation. And then they can use that model for predicting the inflation for a new set of values of repo rate and reverse repo rate. Or suppose somebody wants to predict the life of an insect for the particular dose of insecticide. So, again if uh, the past information is available and uh, he has already fitted a model, then for the new dose of insecticide he can predict the life of the insect. So, prediction is an important phenomena of the multiple linear regression model. One may be interested in predicting the value of y for the given set of values of x. Then the given set of values of x may be exact and uh, sometimes uh, you may have the set of values of x uh, which are a bit uncertain. Say you have predicted the values of x is for some future time point and then 
on the basis of those predicted values of x is you want to predict the value of y also. So, x values are uncertain. So, in this lecture I will consider both the cases when x values are certain or uncertain and then we will go for developing the trade values for y for given values of x is. We will consider the case of spherical disturbances as well as non spherical disturbances for the prediction purpose. Now, first we consider the case of prediction or forecasting when x values are uncertain and we have this model y equal to x beta plus u. Say x f transpose is equal to 1 x 2 f so on x k f these are the true values of explanatory variables for the forecast period f. But these true values are say unknown. So, you have estimated values of the explanatory variables for the forecast period which are given in this vector x z f transpose equal to 1 x 2 f hat so on x k f hat. So, actually these are the estimated values of the explanatory variables for the forecast period. Then the true value of y f is y f equal to x f transpose beta plus u f. And the point prediction is y hat f equal to x hat f transpose b, where b is the OLS estimator of beta. In fact, here we have already assumed that your disturbances are iid or spherical means expectation of u u transpose is equal to sigma square u i n. So, this is your point prediction for y f and the actual value of y f is x f transpose beta plus u f. So, the forecast error is E f equal to y f minus y hat f which is equal to substitute the value of y f which is x f transpose beta plus u f minus y hat f is equal to x hat f transpose b. And then we write this value as say u f minus x had f b and then we take x head f transpose beta also here. So, actually we have taken plus x f head transpose beta. So, we have to subtract this value. and then we have plus x f transpose beta and then we write it as u f minus x f hat transpose b minus beta and then we have minus we write it as beta transpose x f head and uh, we write this term as beta transpose x f transpose. So, you get minus beta transpose x head f transpose min or you can take transpose outside. So, x f head minus x f whole transpose. No, you do not have transpose here. So, you simply have minus beta transpose x f at 
minus x f. Now, we assume that expectation of x sub f is equal to x f that is full cost L makes unbiased full cost of the x values. Then we also assume that the covariance between x f head and O L s estimator B is 0 that is expectation of x f head transpose B minus beta is equal to 0. And uh, this assumption actually makes sense because we are forecasting the values of x f that is we are obtaining x head f from outside the model while forecasting the val x values we are not making use of the sample information contained in your model y equal to x beta plus u whereas b is based on this model that is the sample information so you can easily assume that xf head and b minus beta are uncorrelated then if we take expectation of ef expectation of ef is equal to expectation of uf minus x f head transpose b minus beta minus beta transpose x f head minus x f. The expectation of u f is 0, expectation of second term is also 0 and then the expectation of third term is also 0 because expectation of x f head is equal to x f. So, finally, expectation of e f is 0 and this shows that expectation of y head f that is expectation of x f head transpose b is equal to x f transpose beta. So, y head f is an unbiased forecast for y f. Actually, x f transpose beta is equal to expectation of y f. Then, variance of x f head is equal to expectation of x f head minus x f minus x f head minus x f transpose and we denote this variance by v x f head. Then variance of forecast error is expectation of E f square equal to sigma square y head f which is equal to expectation of u f minus x f head transpose b minus beta minus beta transpose x f head minus x f whole square and then we take a square of this and then we take expectation. So, the first term is u f square, the second term is actually you have x f head transpose b minus beta whole square which you can write as x f head transpose b minus beta then since this is a scalar its transpose is the same. So, we take transpose of this so you get this term and then we take a square of this say beta transpose x f head minus x f. So, you get beta transpose x f head minus x f x f head minus x f transpose beta and then you get the cross product terms also. So, the first cross product term is we multiply u f and x f at transpose b minus beta and then we take expectation of this. 
Now, expectation of this is equal to 0. Remember, this uf is the disturbance term for the forecast period f. So, this is uncorrelated with b, which is based on first n observations. Further, xf head is also uncorrelated with b. So, expectation of this term is equal to 0. Further, if you take expect the second cross product term that is u f beta transpose x f head minus x f, expectation of this term is also 0, because x f head is uncorrelated with u f. So, expectation of u f is 0, expectation of this term is also 0. So, this is also 0. Further, the th third cross product term which involves x f head transpose b minus beta and beta transpose x f head minus x f, this also has expectation 0 because this x f or this x f is uncorrelated with b and expectation of b minus beta is 0. So, you can write it as 0. So, expectation of all the cross product terms are 0. Then expectation of u f square is sigma square u, expectation of x f head transpose b minus beta, b minus beta transpose x f head is equal to uh, x f and b minus beta, these are uncorrelated. So, we simply write expectation of b minus beta, b minus beta transpose here, which is sigma square u x transpose x inverse. Then uh, we also make use of the result that expectation of x f head x f head transpose is equal to v x f head plus x f x f transpose. So, finally, you obtain you write it equal to expectation of b minus beta or actually trace of b minus beta b minus beta transpose x f head x f head transpose and then you take expectation of this expectation of this. So, finally, you obtain sigma square u x f transpose x transpose x inverse x f plus trace of x transpose x inverse v x f head. Then expectation of this term is beta transpose here you will get v x f head beta. Then utilizing all these results we obtain sigma square y hat f equal to sigma square u 1 plus x f transpose x transpose x inverse x f plus trace of x transpose x inverse v x f hat plus beta transpose v x f hat beta. So, finally, you obtain this expression for the variance of forecasted value y hat f. Now, suppose x f head is equal to x f that is x f is exactly known. So, there is no uncertainty involved and then v x f head is equal to 0. So, in that case expectation of e f square is equal to sigma square u 1 plus x f transpose x transpose inverse x f. The terms involving v x f head are now omitted, those terms become 0 and then an unbiased estimator of sigma square u is s square. 
So, if an unbiased estimator of V x f hat say V hat x f hat is available, then an unbiased estimator of sigma square y hat f is given by sigma hat square y hat f equal to s square 1 plus x f hat transpose x transpose x inverse x f hat plus trace of x transpose x inverse v hat x f hat plus b transpose v hat x f hat b. Then the expression for the variance of y hat f is equal to sigma square u 1 plus x f transpose x transpose x inverse x f plus trace of this term plus beta transpose v x f hat beta. So, the unbiased estimator for sigma square u is s square then expectation of x f hat x f hat transpose is equal to x f x f transpose plus v x f hat. So, an unbiased estimator of this term is x f hat x f hat transpose. So, that an unbiased estimator of x f transpose x transpose x inverse x f plus trace of this term is x f hat transpose x transpose x inverse x f hat. So, you get an unbiased estimator of this term also, the unbiased estimator for these two terms. Further, expectation of B transpose V hat x f hat B equal to expectation of trace of V hat x f hat B B transpose. Then, uh, you have trace of V x f hat expectation of B B transpose and then expectation of B B transpose is equal to sigma square u x transpose x inverse plus beta beta transpose and then you can write V trace of V x f hat beta beta transpose equal to beta transpose V x f hat beta and the first term is sigma square u trace of V x f hat x transpose x inverse and from here we obtain an unbiased estimator for beta transpose V x f hat beta as this term. Now, we combined the equations 12, 13 and 14 and then we obtain the result 11. So, this you can easily verify now. And when x f is exactly known, then you simply delete all the terms involving we had x f hat and then you get this estimator for the values of y hat f. Now, sometimes in the model the disturbances are non-spherical. So, now we consider the problem of prediction for the model with non-spherical disturbances. Of course, if your model has non-spherical disturbances, then the autocorrelation structure between the disturbances or between the observations also have some information about the data structure. So, one can utilize that information also for the prediction purpose. So, in the linear model with non-spherical disturbances, the disturbances have interdependence and the pattern of sample residuals contain information which is useful in prediction of post sample observations. That information can be utilized for the prediction purpose also. So, uh, this information can be utilized to obtain best linear unbiased prediction predictor. Then this leads to the gain in efficiency over the usual expected value estimator.
Uh, now, we consider the model y equal to x beta plus u expectation of u is 0, expectation of u u transpose is equal to sigma square u omega. Then we consider the problem of predicting y f for given x f. x f is k cross one vector for the forecast period f. Then u f is the disturbance term for the forecast period. So, that y f equal to x f transpose beta plus u f. Expectation of u f is 0, variance is sigma square u. But u f is correlated with u also, because now the model has this kind of variance coherence matrix. So, the disturbances are have some kind of autocorrelation also. So, naturally u f is correlated with u and we assume that expectation of u f u is equal to sigma square u omega. So, omega is then cross one vector of correlations between u f and the elements of u. So, along with the sample information, while developing the best linear unbiased predictor, we also make use of this information. The information contained in the correlation between u and u f. because this also provides you some information about the data structure. Your future observation is correlated with the past observation. So, you can utilize this kind of correlation for making the prediction along with the sample information. Now, we prove this result the best linear unbiased predictor of y f is y hat f equal to x f transpose beta hat plus omega transpose capital omega inverse y minus x beta hat, where beta hat is the generalized least square estimator of beta. Remember for IID disturbances, uh, our predictor was y hat f equal to x transpose b. It was just like this, but here you have one more term in the expression for predictor and this term is because of the correlation between u and u f. So, we have one additional term here. Now, suppose c is n cross 1 vector and y hat f is equal to c transpose y. So, this is the linear predictor of y f. So, you have to obtain this the value of c and for the best linear unbiased predictor we obtain c transpose y such that sigma square p the variance of the predictor which is equal to expectation of c transpose y minus y f square is minimum subject to expectation of c transpose y minus y f is equal to 0, means the predictor c transpose y predicts y f unbiasedly and the variance of the predictor is minimum. So, keeping in view these two things, we now obtain the value of c. So, suppose p is equal to c transpose y equal to 
c transpose x beta plus c transpose u, we have substituted y equal to x beta plus q. Then c transpose y minus y f is equal to c transpose x beta plus c transpose u minus you have substituted y f equal to x f transpose beta plus u f. So, you get this term. So, this is c transpose y minus y f. Now, expectation of c transpose y minus y f is equal to expectation of u f is 0. Then you get c transpose x beta here, expectation of c transpose u is also 0. Then you get a term x f transpose beta here. So, c transpose x beta minus x f transpose beta equal to 0 or x transpose c equal to x f because this holds for all beta. So, we must have x transpose c equal to x f or c transpose x equal to x f transpose. Further, sigma square p which is equal to expectation of c transpose y minus y f square is equal to expectation of c transpose u minus u f. We have utilized this relation and then this is equal to expectation of c transpose u square plus expectation of u f square minus twice expectation of u f c transpose u. Now, expectation of c transpose u square is equal to c transpose expectation of u u transpose c which is equal to sigma square u c transpose c. You have sigma square u c transpose omega c plus expectation of u f square is equal to sigma square u. Then we have minus 2 times expectation of u f c transpose u is equal to c transpose expectation of u f u which is equal to c transpose omega. Or you can take sigma square u common. So, you get 1 minus twice c transpose omega plus c transpose capital omega c. So, basically you have to minimize this term and then you also have the restriction given in equation 8. So, we take d equal to sigma square u 1 minus twice c transpose small omega plus c transpose capital omega c minus twice lambda transpose x transpose c minus x f. We are using the method of Lagrange's multipliers. We have to minimize this term as subject to the constraints x transpose minus x transpose c minus x f equal to 0. Lambda is k cross 1 vector of Lagrange's multipliers. Then we differentiate d with respect to c and lambda and then we substitute the differential coefficients equal to 0 and then we solve these equations. So, when we differentiate d with respect to c, we obtain sigma square u, then differential coefficient of 1 is 0, then uh, del o del c, c transpose omega is equal to omega and del o del c, c transpose capital omega c is equal to twice capital omega c. 
So, we obtain minus twice small omega plus twice capital omega C here and then we get minus twice lambda transpose x transpose C. So, you can write lambda transpose x transpose C as C transpose x lambda and then we differentiate it with respect to C. So, we obtain x lambda. So, you get minus twice x lambda and this we write equal to 0 and this implies that capital omega C minus x lambda equal to small omega and then if we differentiate d with respect to lambda we obtain minus twice x transpose c minus x f equal to 0 and then this gives x transpose c equal to x f. So, we solve these two equations to obtain the values of c and lambda. Now, suppose uh, the minimizing values of c and lambda are denoted by c head and lambda head. Then we obtain these values by solving these two equations. Now, from the first equation we obtain c head equal to omega inverse x lambda head plus small omega and then we substitute this value of c head in second equation. So, we obtain x transpose omega inverse x lambda head plus small omega equal to x f and then from here we obtain x transpose omega inverse x lambda head plus x transpose omega inverse small omega equal to x f or lambda head is equal to x transpose omega inverse x inverse x f minus x transpose omega inverse small omega and then again we substitute this value of lambda head in this expression for c head and finally, we obtain c head equal to omega inverse x x transpose omega inverse x inverse x f plus then you have the second part capital omega inverse minus omega inverse x x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse small omega and then the best linear unbiased predictor is y head f is equal to c head transpose y and we take c head transpose. So, you get x f transpose x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse y plus you have omega transpose then you have this matrix here then y. Now, this part gives you the GLS estimator beta head. So, you get x f transpose beta head plus small omega transpose capital omega inverse then you have y minus x and then you get x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse y which is equal to beta head. So, finally, you obtain is small omega transpose capital omega inverse small y minus x beta head yeah so this best linear unbiased predictor has two parts x f transpose beta head so this actually predicts the expected value of y f and then you have one more part also and this part is because of the correlation between the observation for the forecast period f 
means omega is also here. So, this shows the correlation between the observation for the forecast period and the observations of the sample period. So, this part actually takes care of the data structure which is you can say hidden in the correlation between the current observations and the observations for the forecast period. Now, we may write y hat f as y hat f equal to x f transpose beta hat plus omega transpose capital omega inverse E, where E is equal to y minus x beta hat. So, E is the sample residuals from the GLS regression and then E can also be written as this in terms of u. So, we predict y f equal to x f transpose beta plus u f using y hat f equal to x f transpose beta hat plus omega transpose capital omega inverse E. So, you can say this part estimates the expected value of y f given x f which is this part x f transpose beta gives you the expected value of y f given x f. And then this part omega transpose capital omega inverse E utilizes the interdependence of disturbances along with the sample residuals E that is estimate of disturbance term u to estimate the prediction disturbance u f. So, u f is estimated by using this part. For the spherical case means when the disturbances are i i d, you are not able to estimate this part, because the sample observations do not have any information about u f. So, we may view 13 as an estimator of the expected value of y f given x f and E. So, in fact, expectation of y f given x f E is equal to x f transpose beta plus expectation of u f given E. So, the first term of 13 is an estimator of the first term of 14 and the second term of 13 is an estimator of the second term of 14 expectation of u f given E. And then if the disturbances are uncorrelated with each other then omega is equal to 0 and y hat f is equal to x f transpose beta hat. Now, the forecast error is E f equal to y f minus C hat transpose y and then y f is equal to x f transpose beta plus u f minus x f transpose beta hat minus omega transpose capital omega inverse E. So, this part is actually c hat transpose y and then you can write it as u f minus x f transpose beta hat minus beta minus omega transpose capital omega inverse E and then this is equal to u f minus x f transpose you can write beta hat minus beta equal to x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse u. Then you have the last term omega transpose and then you can write omega inverse q as say capital Q u where capital Q is equal to omega inverse minus omega inverse x x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse. So, this is the expression for q and then we observe that q is a positive semi definite matrix symmetric matrix also. 
further we observe that q omega q is equal to q. You simply multiply q by omega and then you again multiply it by q then finally you obtain q. And if you take x transpose q then x transpose q is equal to x transpose omega inverse minus x transpose omega inverse x again you have x transpose omega inverse x inverse. So, you get identity here then x transpose omega inverse. So, you have x transpose omega inverse minus x transpose omega inverse. So, this is 0. Similarly, q x is also equal to 0. So, variance of E f is equal to sigma square u 1 plus x f transpose x transpose omega inverse x inverse x f. This part actually you get from here. So, if you take a square of this then you get u f square and a square of this term. And if you take a square of this term means you can take x f transpose x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse u u transpose omega inverse x x transpose omega inverse x inverse x f and then you take expectation expectation of u u transpose is sigma square u omega. So, you get x transpose omega inverse omega omega inverse x. So, finally, you obtain x f transpose x transpose omega inverse x inverse x f. So, you get this term. Then you have a square of this term omega transpose capital omega inverse and then you have q u and uh, expectation of u u transpose is again sigma square u omega. So, finally, you get omega transpose capital Q omega and then you have this cross product term also minus 2 times x f transpose x transpose omega inverse x inverse x transpose omega inverse is small omega. So, if we use a simple expected value estimator then the corresponding error is this. So, the second term is not involved here and then you can easily find the variance of E curl f as in this form. So, you take expectation of E f curl square and then you take expectation and just you use the expectations obtained earlier. And then we take the difference of two variances, variance of E f curl minus variance of E f and you get sigma square u small omega transpose q small omega. And you have observed that this matrix q is positive semi definite. So, this is always greater than or equal to 0. So, uh, you get a predictor with lesser variance if you are making use of the correlation part also this omega and this part gives you the gain in efficiency. So, you get a better predictor if you are making use of the correlation between u and u f. Now, we consider forecasting for model with disturbances following a stationary A R 1 process. Again we consider the model y equal to x beta plus u and we assume that u t follows an A R 1 process u t equal to rho u t minus 1 plus epsilon t. Epsilon t is our i i d random variables with mean 0 and within sigma square epsilon. And then sigma expectation of u t square is sigma square u say sigma square epsilon upon 1 minus rho square. 
expectation of ut ut minus k is equal to rho to the power k sigma square u and then you get this covariance matrix of u and we denote it by sigma square u omega and then r step ahead forecast say suppose you take f equal to n plus r we have expectation of u n plus r u equal to sigma square u then we obtain the correlation between u n plus r and the first term of u that is u 1 which is rho to the power n plus r minus 1 then the correlation between u n plus r and u 2 is rho to the power n plus r minus 2 and so on. So, finally, you get this vector. So, this is equal to sigma square u rho to the power r omega n. So, omega n is the last column of capital omega and then omega omega inverse is equal to identity matrix. So, omega n transpose omega inverse is 0 0 swan 1. So, y hat n plus r is equal to x r transpose beta hat plus rho to the power r omega n transpose capital omega inverse E. You get this expression for the best linear unbiased predictor and then you can write it as x r transpose beta hat plus rho to the power r and then you have this vector and this gives you the last component of vector E which is E n. So, you obtain this expression and if uh, in particular you have to make one period ahead forecast that is r is equal to 1 then y hat n plus 1 is equal to x n plus 1 transpose beta hat plus rho E n. So, once we fit a multiple linear regression model for the given data set, often we are also interested in predicting the value of y for the given set of values of x's. We discussed various examples in this lecture where we are interested in predict predicting the value of y. So, first in this lecture we have considered the multiple linear regression model with the spherical disturbances and then we have developed an unbiased predictor for the value of y for a given set of values of x. We have also obtained the variance of the predictor and then the sometimes uh, the disturbances are auto correlated, so non spherical disturbances. So, we also considered the case of non spherical disturbances and then we have derived the best linear unbiased predictor for the value of y for the given set of values of x. In fact, we observe that if the disturbances are non spherical, then we get better predictors because your predictor not only utilizes the sample information, but it also utilizes the correlation structure between the past observations and the observation for the forecast period. So, that is why we get better predictors. We also discussed a special case when disturbances follow AR1 process. So, here I am going to stop. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Gillette Sam and I teach sociology uh, at IIT Kanpur. Uh, today I am going to uh, tell you about uh, an important debate that is occurring around uh, the concept of globalization. Uh, now, uh, uh, within the study of globalization, there are two sets of people. The first set of people uh, uh, argue that globalization is uh, very real. It's something that is happening around us all the time. And in fact, it's something that is gaining strength over time. The second set of people, uh, and the first set of people are, are called the globalists. The second set of people are not so convinced that globalization is something real uh, and they, ref they are referred to as skeptics. Now the skeptics argue that uh, unlike what the globalists would have us believe that there are things and ideas and people that are traveling across the world across multiple borders and that we live in an interconnected world, actually there are many parts of the world and many types of people who are completely left out of these kind of global flows. So they would give you the example of uh, typically indigenous communities who live across the world. And they would argue that if you look at the lives of indigenous communities, particularly tribes that are uh, quite isolated uh, uh, in terms of their physical location, their lives continue without their participating in any kind of global flows. To this the globalists would respond that even though uh, people may live in isolated and remote locations and they may not be directly uh, involved in global flows, their lives today are still being influenced by events that are happening at a global scale. Uh, you can take the example of climate change. So, uh, for instance, if, uh, if there is an indigenous community that has no contact with uh, anyone else in the world apart from themselves, uh, but they live in an area uh, which is experiencing uh, an increase in sea levels, an increase in the temperature, all of this may be attributed to people in neighboring countries or actually rather events that are happening across the globe. So in that sense, even though you may not be directly participating in global flows, your everyday life is affected by what is happening around the world. Uh, another argument that the skeptics make uh, is uh, in regard to what happens with the nation states. Now initially when discussions about globalization started and we are talking about the 1990s, um, the expectation was that uh, the, the nation state uh, as an entity is going to wither away, uh, it's going to cease to be important. Uh, now um, skeptics could point out to uh, the world today and say, well nation states are still important. Uh, we still live our lives based on which uh, nation we were born in or which nation we have citizenship in. Their rules and regulations are still important for us. Uh, to which globalists would argue that this expectation that the nation state will cease to be important, uh, that itself is a fallacy. Uh, rather than facing a situation that the nation states state becomes less important over time, uh, we actually may be uh, headed towards a situation where in addition to the nation state, there are other laws which become important to our lives and they shape our lives uh, on an everyday basis.